to Tiny Code Christmas Day 11, the third dimension. And today we're going to be taking a look at how we can build this. So this is the end goal for today and it is a 3D spinning voxel cube and it is made up of these circles which have this nice little bit of shading on it and you can see that there's a plasma effect applied to the points on the cube based on their coordinates on the screen. Now that last bit is going to be left as a challenge to you and we are going to work in this video to build up to this which is the 3D cube with the voxels and the rotation and no plasma effect. So this today is uh, as much of a challenge as you want it to be. Um, the video will explain this effect as you see it on the screen fully but if you want you can stop the video at any time and give yourself an extra bit of a challenge. Now today I'm only going to be explaining the code in tick 80 because the it's just easier to fit it on the screen and then I'll be covering Pico 8 specific stuff in the Pico 8 section but there's not going to be two completely separate sections today. So let's take a look at our setup here. So I am aliasing sine and cosine, I am clearing the screen, I am assigning variable time and I'm assigning time to a variable t. I am creating a point here and this is our first introduction to Lua tables and basically what a Lua table does is it allows me to combine these three values into one entity so and then I can refer to that further on down as point.x and point.y and point.z when we get to it so it allows me to group these three variables um, together essentially as one unit and I'm storing that in point so it'll allow me to store x equal to 10 y equal to 10 z equal to 10 and use them and modify them at different points throughout my program so what we're going to do first of all is print out this point to the screen so we're just going to start with 2d for a minute so we're going to ignore that z for a second and i'm just going to print out 10 and 10 to the screen now since we're dealing with 3d the origin of a 3d scene is going to be the center point of the screen that is going to be the center where all of our axes converge and we are going to print out our zero zero point at 120 and 68 on the screen so we have to shift everything over um, 120 pixels and down 68 pixels and then I'm just going to use the color 12 to print that out as a white pixel so let's just start with zero zero and as I say again we'll be ignoring the z value and if I run it we get a pixel in the center of the screen and if I make it a hundred and fifty and run it I'll get the pixel down here so from the center point over a hundred and down fifty so when we're working with our axis our x-axis is horizontal across the screen the y-axis is vertical and we're going to introduce the z-axis now which is depth and the z-axis is going to go positive into the screen so the bigger the z number gets the further away something is going to be from us on the screen so zero z is going to be essentially our viewpoint so we we'll want to make sure that this isn't zero so that it doesn't go behind our our scene so I'm just going to make this one for the second and we're going to introduce this perspective so what this does is as the further a point moves into the screen we should see it change its position on the screen so to do this I'm going to do point dot Z so I'm going to take the X value and divide it by the Z value and I'm going to take the Y value and divide that by the Z value so if we stick with this one and maybe I'll make Y equal to um, minus 50 put it up here and if I start to increase Z meaning that point 
travels further into the screen. you'll see that it converges on the center of the screen. So what I'm going to do here is every time chick is called, it clears the screen, sets t equal to time, creates this point and plots it. So I'm just going to make this equal to time. That was a bit, bit too quick. So I'm going to maybe divide this by 100 and you can see that um, Slow it down a little bit. You see that it starts here, and the further that travels back into the screen, the closer it gets to the center of the screen. So eventually, as that travels away, it will eventually converge to the center point of the screen. So that is kind of like the old uh, star field screensaver on Windows, where you'd see all the stars flying at you, and that is essentially a star flying away from us. So we could do that in reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start this at 10 points back. I'm going to subtract T so that it will actually get closer to us. And we can see that kind of a star effect where the star shoots off as it flies past us in space. And all of this is done just by taking an X and a Y coordinate and dividing it by the Z coordinate. So there's some things we'll have to be careful of. Um, if I set it to zero, zero will essentially be at our viewpoint, so we won't see it. And again, we want to ideally avoid dividing by zero. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at how we can turn that from a point. We're going to turn it into a circle. So I have to add a radius, uh, maybe add a radius of four. And we'll take a look at that. So when we add a point like this, it's going to be, um, so we want this to be a circle and we want to add that kind of depth effect to it. And we simply do that by drawing multiple circles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a for loop that goes from J equals zero to two, and I'm going to change it so that it gives us a slight change position so i'm going to minus j and minus j divided by two and you see here that we get some uh, multiple circles drawn the next thing i need to do is i need to change the color so i'm going to subtract j from the color and we can see that we're getting we're getting somewhere now and the one thing left is the radius so the radius in this case I'll say is 4 and I need to subtract J as well there right, make it 3 and that gives us a gray ball with a little bit of a spotlight on it so I'm simply drawing circle three times 0 1 and 2 for the j values and that just draws a gray circle a lighter gray circle and then a white circle but obviously as the circles get smaller they get blockier and the smaller one ends up looking like a square or ends up looking like a cross but you can see it gives us that slight illusion of having some shine on it now one thing that we could do is we could change the radius of this based on the Z component here. So we could make this um, 10 So we could do some changes here. So I'm just going to make this maybe 10 minus point dot Z. And then if we change the depth as this gets closer to the screen, it will be bigger. 
and as it moves further into the screen it will get smaller and we can see obviously if we go too far the point will result in a negative radius and a negative radius will result in a circle of radius zero being drawn which means it's not going to draw a circle but that gives you a rough idea of how we can we can scale that a bit so and if I just add in the time again you can see that it will get bigger as it moves towards us so that's just to show a an idea of how we can modify the depth of it with this now that 10 minus point dot z is the thing that will change the size of our point based on the z value so we're not going to use that for the voxel cube that's just something that you can use to demonstrate it yourself and the reason for that is that the difference in size between the front and the back of the voxel cube uh, even if it's just one or two pixels really kind of disturbs the perspective effect when you actually have them so close together so you can play around with it if you want but it's not something that's essential I am however going to keep the general shininess of our voxel next thing I need to do is not just create one point but create multiple points and this lets us um, and this leads us to another Lua table in this case called points and what I'm going to do with this is instead of manually writing out X Y and Z um, points like this I'm going to use a for loop to generate the point for me so to create a point in our so to create a point we need to insert it into the table so table is table dot insert is built into Lua and it allows us to insert something into a table so in this case the first parameter is the table into which I want to insert something and then I'm gonna x equals 10 y equals 10 and z equals 10 so just set that up as our basic point and and don't forget to close off the bracket so what I need to do now is instead of inserting this manually and typing it in I want to use for loops to generate each of the points for this so for example x equals say minus 25 to 25 in steps of 5 and then maybe x equals minus 25 to plus 25 in steps of 5 and y equals minus 25 to 25 in steps of 5 and then we'll do our end 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 now this I'm just going to split over two lines so it's a bit more readable and instead of typing in x y and z I'm going to actually make it equal to the, the values of these variables from the for loop so this is going to go from minus 25 to 25 in steps of 5 minus 25 to 25 in steps of 5 for x oh, y and z apologies x y and z and then I'm going to in this table the key x is going to be equal to the value from that x variable at the point in which we insert it into the table and the same for y and z so it might look a bit confusing with both the values but with both of them being x but this is the key and this will give us the value so this is going to essentially do what we did on day nine with the shade bob where we created a square in 2d and now we're actually just creating that square in 3d because we've just added an extra axis z and that should take that nicely into the third dimension for us so now we have our points inserted into the table now we have to actually draw them individually so we've the code here for drawing one point and that's not quite good enough for us so what we need to do is we need a for loop down here as well to iterate over every 
point. So for i equals 1 to points, do, and I'll just put in the end down here, and indent this slightly for readability. Instead of point now, it's points i for every one of these. And that should iterate for each point from one to points and then for each point it will draw it as a circle. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we're getting a square. We can see here it is in fact a square. It could be a cube, um, but we're gonna to have to expand it a bit to see if it is. So what we want to do is maybe multiply this by a number, maybe 600 and 600 and we'll run that so we're actually in the middle of our cube by the looks of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value to Z here to push it back further into the screen so you can see now that we in fact do have our cube so what we can see with that now is that that's being drawn but it's actually being drawn back to front. So these guys at the front of the cube are being drawn first because they are minus values and then the ones further away are being drawn last. So they're being technically drawn on top of it. So what we can do is we can actually sort these points so that they're drawn from the front to the back. So if we take a look here at the Z values, they start at minus 25 to 25. So minus 25 is back towards us. So they get drawn first, then 25, we get drawn last. They're further into the screen and they are going to be drawn last. But since we're drawing to the screen on top of the previous thing, they will be on top. So it'll look strange. So thankfully Lua has a built-in sort function so this will be one of the differences between Pico 8 and we'll take a look at it in a bit b.z and we see now that our cube is being drawn in the correct manner so I'm just going to mess around with these numbers a bit and see if I can get that cube looking a bit better um, maybe like that just looks a bit better so we can see our lines going back and that in fact is our 3d cube so the thing that's left to do at this point is to add the rotation so for the rotation code I'm going to pop it in as functions up above the tick function so this function is called rotate y it takes a point p and an angle that we are going to use to rotate our cube around so up here i'm going to make angle equal to zero and inside tick 80 angle equals angle plus 0 0.1 okay so we need an angle that we're going to rotate around we'll start at zero and we'll take it from there so let's see we have our rotation function so this takes a point p and it takes the values of that point p and it'll take the since we're rotating it around the y-axis the y values will stay the same so the height of any of them doesn't change when they're being rotated in their pixels or in their points they might be drawn to the screen when we divide for pers per perspective at a slightly different height but that's not the point that's the projection separately so p dot x multiplied by the cosine of the angle minus p dot z times the sine of the angle y stays the same p dot x times the sine of the angle plus p dot z times the cosine of the angle and that's fairly similar to our rotation code that we were looking at on day eight so x equals x plus t y equals y plus t, uh, y equals y t z equals z t and this creates our little table and it returns it to us so so now we need to rotate these points before we put them into the table because we'll put them into the table and then we'll sort them so what we want to do is 
So P equals rotate Y, and I'm going to pass in these original values, X equals X, Y equals Y, and Z equals Z, and I'm going to give it the angle, and then that gives us back P, which is the point that has been rotated. So I'm just going to change this to P dot X, P dot Y, P dot Z, and if I run it, we'll see that we now have a rotating cube. Slightly too fast. Slightly too fast, so we'll slow that down. And you can see that as the points drop back, they're lower on the screen, or higher on the screen, they'll all converge to zero as we go. So if we want to rotate another point, um, I can use P again and rotate X, P, angle. Now that rotate X code, I'm going to pop in here. Now we see that it is rotating on those two axes. And just for the sake of completion, I'll pop in the Z rotation code as well. So you can see for the rotate X, the X coordinate doesn't move. For rotate Z, the Z coordinate doesn't move. And I will add one more rotation here. P equals rotate Z, P. And now we should have our cube rotating on all three axes. So now we'll take a look at the Pico 8 code. So you can see that I have my rotate Y, X and Z, the exact same as in tick 80. And the angle obviously is going to be in turns instead of radians. And the main issue here is that I also have to provide my own sort function. So let's just take a look at the code in general first. I still have points, I have angle, and I have my for loops. I'm rotating the points and I am adding them. So Pico8 has a function instead of table dot insert, you can just use add. You still need to include the table name and then it's the same. So it works the same except you can just use add. Then at this point I have to call the Z sort function that I've actually provided here and then everything else works the same. Obviously we're on Pico 8, so there will be some differences in terms of the performance. So if I just go straight off and make that the same as the Tick 80, it's going to reduce down to 15 frames or even worse. And there are some clever tricks you can use to increase the performance on this. So let's take a look at what's actually happening in this sort function. It visits every point um, and while the point is less than the is less than the other point, it swaps the points. So that's basically it. It goes through the array or it goes through the table and compares the points and swaps them. So not the most efficient sort, but it'll do for the small amount of points that we have here. So for more details on the challenge and a different expert challenge, make sure to check out the website. Best of luck.